abdominal pain. Right? And then you have the posterior gapping test. And in that case, you're pressing on the AS. Well, let's, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's get there. So again, I'm just pressing down on the ASIS. And then it's stressing the joint on the back side here. So what I'll do is I'll go over a couple of these, and then we'll go and get some tables and then start practicing them. <coughs> <coughs> and then a quick test. Basically, you're just squatting down and scanning it down for the lower extremity. So you're looking, they could have, you want to identify where they're having the pain or the restriction. You know, is it either your knees, is it your hips, your low back. And then Kemp's test. Again, it can be as simple as just I want you to uh, touch the back of your knee on one side. And then you ask them, does that change your pain? You don't want it to say, does that hurt? Because the back might have already been hurt. So you say, is there any change in your symptoms? Or where do where you feel that? Maybe you're going to feel it. It might just be in the low back, or it could go down the back of the leg. Okay. Then the other way you can do it is cross your arms over your chest. And then, um, once you get to them, just in So then, well, I, the way I'll usually do it is have my hands here like this, and then I can move the person. This way I can control, because they might they might bend like this, and they might rotate their, their spine a lot. So I'm holding like this to stabilize the pelvis, and now I'm controlling the way that they move. And then also, that I have my hands here already, but I can ask them, you know, where are you feeling the symptoms? Is it right here? Is it here? Is it here? Yeah, I've already got my hands there. And then also you can put overpressure and press down like that to increase the compression. Right. And then the Gillette's, we basically can see in the, well I guess that's kind of dark. So I'm going to hook under the PSISs. I'll do it once this way and then I'll do it for the <coughs> So I'm hooking under the PSIS, it's like this, I want you to raise your right knee up. And I'm watching, I'm feeling that the PSIS moves down on that side. Alright, so let's do it. Right, okay. You just hold that knee down. Okay, so I'm hooking underneath there. I want you to raise this leg up. And so that's dropping down like that. And so then what you're looking for is that either it won't move or it will actually go the other way. Instead of dropping down, it'll, it'll seem like it's raising up on that side. So that's indicating that that, that side joint's fixed on that side. And you can also do it one side at a time, where instead of having, you can have one finger on the PSIS and then one on S2. So you're checking one side at a time. And then you could be on the other side between S2 and the PSIS on one side. All right, so then here we're still, now the single leg raise, that comes later because that's more of a neurologic type of evaluation, whereas this one is more, we're still talking about inert tissues, joints, and things like that. So with double straight leg raise, now, depending on your size and the size of your patient, you may or may not be able to have, hold your hand underneath like this. But what I'm doing is I'm having one part of my hand on the SI joint, uh, some of the fingers in there, up into the lumbar. And so then I'm feeling, so you can feel right here, it's the SI joint's moving. And then now I'm starting to feel the lumbar flattening out. And you can almost see that in the side patrol like this. So you can see that you start to lose the lumbar lordosis like about here. So basically what you're doing is you're identifying if the patient, if that produces pain, and you're identifying what joint is moving at the time to identify either if it's a 
SI joint problem or a lumbar joint problem, or again, it still could be a muscular problem. If somebody has a really acute low back, then it could just be muscle spasms and things like that that they're going to produce symptoms. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and grab some tables and then let's uh, start practicing these. I'm going to be at around S1. Normally I'd have these dials facing me, but I'm going to do it so that it's facing you. And then here I'm going to be at T12L1. So I want you to bend forward, reach down towards the ground as far as you can. All right, so if you have the Home Depot version like this, you're going to have to do some calculations to, to work the angles here. But basically, you're just, this subtracts out the amount that happens at the hip, and then the difference between the two is going to be the true lumbar flexion. Okay, so I want you to come back up. And then he was very good with his lumbar pelvic rhythm there, so that was good. Right. Yeah, he's, got, he's got rhythm. All right, so I want you to extend. Okay. And then come back. All right, and then also, you, not only are you going to assess the numbers on here, but you ask them, you know, did that change your symptoms? How did that feel? All okay. right, now let's turn this a little bit more. So now I'm going to do lateral flexion, and then I'm going to be at S1 and T12. And then once you've been to your left. So what this one's doing is it's taking out, subtracting out any movement at the pelvis, and then this is the lumbar, so then you can come back up. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a true picture of the actual lumbar flexion by itself. All right, now for rotation, I want you to, well, you can do it one way like this. I want you to bend forward at the waist. you to put your arms out straight from sides like you're flying a plane. Other way. <laughs> okay, now I want you to... Uh, I want you to rotate your upper body, twist your arms like a window. <laughs> Alright. And then you do the same thing to the other side. I mean, this one's a little bit awkward, but I don't know, this is easier to do than the using the goniometer and trying to look down the middle. Okay, there's another way you can do thoracic rotation or thoracic lumbar. Let's go ahead and lay on your back. So now here you only need to use one because basically the fact that the patient's supine the pelvis is going to be stabilized. I want you to bring this arm in like this and then try to turn this way. Turn your, your Roll your shoulders, not your hips. Roll your shoulders. There you go. Okay. And then go to the other way. Okay. All right. So you can practice if you have inclinometers, use those. If you have goniometers, use that. We'll practice range of motion. And then we'll talk about as far as this is active range of motion. Um, I'm not necessarily going to do a whole lot of passive range of motion. Uh, you can do active resisted, so let's say I want you to try to bring your chin, uh, bring your upper body forward. Okay, and then you bend back like this. And then cross your arms over your chest. Okay, I want you to try to turn your body this way. Yeah, and then the other way. Okay, so you can do some of those kinds of things for active resisted. The other thing is uh, lay face down. Without using your arms, I want you to lift your upper body up. And then press down like that. Okay. All right, so that's about it.